Hi folks, this is all the fruit. I'm in the Park Garcia Sanabria, one of the best parks, one of the best botanic gardens and also one of the best places for fruit hunting in all of the Canary Islands. And this is quite a bold claim. If you are a European fruit hunter or botany enthusiast or park lover, you cannot bypass the island of Tenerife, the subtropical fruitarian paradise where the worldwide Spanish Empire collected or tried to collect all the edible and all the ornamental plants they could gather from their colonies on every continent. Well, when you Google botanic gardens and parks on Tenerife, the first one that will show up is usually the Botanico, the botanic garden in Puerto de la Cruz, the place where the Spanish Empire was collecting the worldwide subtropical biodiversity. The second one which will pop up is the Palmetum of Santa Cruz, a new botanic garden, which is just as amazing as the old one, as the old one. And then you'll get a lot of other results like Parque Tauro, Hotel Tigaiga, Hamilton Gardens, Sitio Litre, Jardin Aquatico, which has been closed recently, unfortunately, and also the name Garcia Zanabria, which will probably get kind of buried among all the other names, like most botanic enthusiasts, they will visit the Botanico in Puerto, the Palmetto in Santa Cruz, and then they will visit a couple of the other parks and decide that they're actually not so much more interesting than a normal ornamental and fruit-bearing plants you can find in residential areas or on farms and markets. And most of them will bypass the Parque Garcia Sanabria, which is a pity, because if you have time to visit only three parks in Tenerife for exotic flora and especially for exotic fruit trees, those three places should be the Botanico in Puerto, the Palmetto and the Parque Garcia Sanabria. I guess it's not making so much um, as uh, so much advertisement because it's a free park. As you can see, you can walk into the park from every one of the surrounding streets, day and night, and look at the nice stuff here. So let's look at some of the nice stuff. Brachyhiton populneos, and next to it, a stand Brachyhiton discolor. Over there, a couple more Brachyhiton discolor. The Kurajong. Both species are called Kurajong and are being harvested a lot. They are like one of the staples of a lot of Australian Aborigine cultures. However, very dangerous to harvest. Don't do it without extensive googling. Here we have... I thought that this is Monstera, but it seems that this is the similar Epipremnum. Well, there should be some delicious Monstera Deliciosa around here. It's a really big park, so I'll walk a little bit faster and concentrate on the fruit trees. Canary date palm and cariota with not such good fruit, but still edible. This is some sabal, some cabbage palm. In the background, the huge trees, ficus, probably ficus lurata, but not one of the really good fruit trees. Here a little bit hidden, one of my favorite fruit in the world. Casimiroa edulis, or the white sapote. I almost, actually, I never ever saw it on a market. It basically has zero shelf life, so basically you should have it in the garden and eat it yourself. Fortunately, the season is over, and there are just the huge seeds lying around everywhere. What a pity, it's such a tasty fruit. Okay, don't eat the toxic... Uh, don't eat the toxic oleander, don't even touch it. The pitanga or Surinam cherry, but it's flowering now, no fruit. Mm. Uh, some rosemary to spice up your cooking. Here, the famous ice cream bean, few people have seen outside of Latin America. Here it is. A small tree with some mild tasting ice cream beans, but... I don't complain that they are mild tasting. No, no. They are ice cream beans after all. Look at that. All this nice edible pulp. 
Mm. So rounding the seats. Mm. Wonderful ice cream beam. A calabash or miracle fruit tree. One almost mature miracle fruit hanging right here in almost three meters above ground. A couple non-pollinated flowers it seems. Here a nice pollinated, well a, a nice flower which is trying to get pollinated. And the young fruit, solo above ground, that I wonder whether the rats or the kids will get it first. Hmm. Pandanus utilis, with edible buds and edible fruit. Schefflera, it's more a medicinal than an edible tree. Hmm. Sorry that I'm munching on ice cream bean while I'm talking. Some other pandanus and cariota. Mm. You really have to look for the most interesting fruit trees around here. You need a couple of hours to search the whole park. It's not that big, but since it's basically one big fruit forest, Mm. It's just basically one big fruit forest. You need some time to search it all. There are some there are some labels here, but you cannot expect them on every tree. So basically you should bring a lot of botanic knowledge with you. Mm. Lily Pili? A wonderful Australian fruit and this one is hanging full of buckets and buckets of tasty purple fruit. A lot of different more or less edible figs but very hard to identify. Mm, I'm still munching away on my ice cream bean. It's not as amazing as I thought it would be but it's amazing enough. Mm, what's littering the ground here? There is a huge... There is a huge tamarind tree here. Let's find some less trampled tamarind fruit on the ground. Or some other way to show it to you. Well... Those are the fruit of the tamarind. Here there was another nice lily pili. Araucaria heterophylla. Unfortunately, this is one of the species which are less useful for edible seeds. They are better araucarias for eating. More brachyhiton. Spatudea campanulata. A very beautiful ornamental and you can actually use the the flowers to get drinking water and there are some contradictory reports about the fruit some say they are toxic some say they are being eaten by the Africans oh this nice rose garden is new I didn't see it last time what have we got here must be some sort of garden with useful plants yeah we have we have uh, rosemary or romero this seems to be myrtle olive trees they must have imported some nice big olive trees from the peninsula this is no canary date palm this is the african arabian date palm with the commercially useful dates hmm, doesn't seem to be such a such a, hmm, yeah, there's salvia, there is ruta, there is some lemon basil, hmm, seems to be some sort of, seems to be some sort of aromatic garden, oregano, cubano, I don't even know this, but I guess this is, oh yeah, it smells like oregano, 
So lots of nice and smelly herbs. Not exactly edible fruit, but you should check out this aromatic garden. Here the carob tree, more typical of sub, uh, well, like half desert and, and Mediterranean climate than of the Canary Island climate, but still a plant with important edible fruit. Well, the olives, I don't see any fruit on the olives. Or I would show them to you. Yeah, there seems to be a, a, a garden there with a lot of aromatic plants. Check it out, folks. It looks very interesting. <coughs> okay, now here I'm being guided back. Well, I could go on forever. I could make a one-hour video about this park. It's very extensive. Like, here on the other side of this path, there is the succulent garden. If you look around, there are... You will find Coca-Cola or key apple. You will find Acerola cherries. You will find a lot of fruit trees, but not all are well labeled like those here. A lot of them you will really have to search for them in the extensive fruit forest-like park. But for now I'll finish this video and then I'll go on a discovery tour myself. Let's see what other fruit I'll find. So folks, this was the Parque Garcia Sanabria in the city of Santa Cruz on the island of Tenerife. If you are interested in botanic gardens, subtropical trees or edible fruit and you are on the island on Teneri of Tenerife, definitely check it out. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the Parque Garcia Sanabria. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.